So, Halloween's coming up soon and you need a really good lesson plan for your seven to nine year olds and we've got a great lesson plan for you. Hello teachers. Uh, in this video, I'll walk you through a really fun Halloween lesson plan for your seven to nine year olds class. Um, if you teach younger students, we've also got lessons for three to five year olds and also for five to seven year olds, two different lessons, two different videos. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to those below. So let's go into the lesson plan. And we want to set the atmosphere for the lesson. So we can do that right from the beginning and it'll take a little bit of planning, but it's well worth it. So before class, think about how you can make the room uh, come to life and be all Halloween-y. Um, some, here's some examples. You can turn off some lights and close the curtains to make the room a bit darker. And you can place some different decorations like jack-o'-lanterns around the class if they can go, like this one's got a candle so it'll glow. Um, you can get some glow-in-the-dark stars and moons and other shapes and stick them around the walls of the classroom. Um, rearrange the furniture. Um, anytime you rearrange the furniture, it, it makes the lesson or the classroom feel different. Uh, so that's something to do. Uh, you can have some eerie music playing in the background, which will really set the atmosphere. Um, if you can, dress up in a Halloween costume. The students will really appreciate that. And if you can, ask the students or ask their parents in the previous lesson if they can also come in Halloween costumes. And then you have a costume competition with prizes for things like the best costume, the funniest, the scariest, and so on. Okay, so once you've done that, uh, everyone's waiting outside. So you go to the door, open the door, and you can greet each student by name as they come in and say, Happy Halloween, and try and have them repeat the same back to you. So once they're in the class, we're going to start with a fantastic uh, game, Halloween themed game, and they'll really enjoy this. It takes a bit of prep, but it's really well worth doing that. Uh, what you'll need are a number of boxes, probably around, if you can, seven or eight boxes is good. And you'll cut a hand shaped hole in each box. So it's just big enough for students to get their hands in. And then you're going to put all sorts of creepy, fun things in the boxes. So your students will put their hands in and try and feel and guess what it is. Um, so some ideas are, uh, you can buy these in discount stores or party stores and other places as well. Uh, things like plastic bats or spiders, uh, goo or slime, that works well. Um, jelly, jello, uh, if you can, shake like a brain. Uh, spider webs, uh, cooked cold spaghetti or noodles. And um, they, they work well because they feel like worms. Uh, peeled grapes, which can be eyeballs. Uh, fake fur, which can be monster fur. Um, cooked rice can be maggots, it feels like that. Uh, tofu, because it simply feels gross. And dried pasta, um, because that can represent teeth or bones. So anyway, so you'll have all the boxes with all these things inside them, all around the classroom, and students can get up and they can feel inside. Don't let them look feel inside and try and guess what each thing is. And have everyone wander around, feeling there'll probably be a lot of noise, a lot of laughter. It's very enjoyable. And then um, at the end, have them all sit down and pull out of the box each thing that they felt. So before you do that, try and get them to tell you what they think it is and then pull out each object and um, they can tell you what they think it was. And you can, you know, for example, the spaghetti, you can say it feels like worms, yuck. So at this point, you can run through your regular warm-up and maintenance routine that you do in every lesson, such as name tags and greetings, homework checking, review activities, and some energy burning exercises. And then we'll be ready for some Halloween fun. And the first activity we're going to do is called Flashcard Ghost Chase. So before the class starts, uh, you need to print off. We've got the flashcards on our website. And I'll show you some here. We've got all the different flashcards. So I'll go through each one. We've got a bat. We'll need the ghost. Whoops. The monster. Zombie. Uh, upside down. Mummy. Witch. Wizard. And black cat. 
Okay, so we'll be learning these words. And you'll start off with um, the flashcards. But when you print them off, also, I've got a couple here. On a couple of them, put a, print a little picture of a ghost. Let's put that. Ghost. I've got the same here. So you're on the back of this one here. So two or three of the flashcards put, put a little ghost picture. We'll use that to play a game as we're teaching the words. So hold up um, the first flashcard. So we've got a witch here and try and elicit. What's this? And teach or elicit witch and chorus. Witch, witch. Um, do that three times. And then you can get students to show you their witch impressions and you can get them to do witch sounds. Have a bit of fun with it. And then, so let's see what's on the back. Oh, nothing. Whew, that's okay. And then on to the next one. We got wizard again. Teach, elicit, chorus, and have students show you their wizard impressions. Let's look on the back. Oh, nothing. Okay, we're safe. And do that until we get to one of the pictures. So, for example, we've got this one here, and it's the monster. So again, teach monster. Get everyone to do their monster impressions. Let's look on the back. Oh no, it's a ghost! And get everyone to stand up and run around the classroom and um, you chase them around, you're the ghost. And you have to run around and try and tap each student. And when you tap them, they have to sit down. And you can even have, um, have one of the students act as the ghost running around and catching and touching them. And you can do that a few times, it's good fun. Okay, so now on to the next part of the lesson, part two. And this is about another popular ha Halloween character, a skeleton. And we're going to create a skeleton on the board and label it. So for this, we've got um, actually the sheets on another, the next slide here. Here it is, I'll make it bigger so you can see it. So this is a craft sheet that you can download from our website. So before class, uh, Print it out and cut out the shapes. If possible, even better, you could blow it up to A3 size so it'll be even bigger, but it's fine, the normal A4 size if, if that's all you've got. And what you'll do is cut out all the shapes and there's 14 shapes, shapes in total. So if you've got 14 students, you'll give one of these cutout shapes to each student. If you've got more than, um, if you've got less than 14, then some students will have two or three and so on. Okay. So you give each of the shapes, the pieces to the students and invite them all to come up to the board. And it's like a jigsaw and they've got to all try and place it on the board in the correct way so that it makes a skeleton. Um, give them some tape or blue tack so they can stick it onto the board. And then next we'll label the skeleton. So draw lines from the different parts of the skeleton and um, have them label the skeleton. So there'll be the words arm, leg, head, hand, fingers, feet, toes, eye, nose, and mouth. And as their students are working together, they can help each other label the skeleton. And you can be there helping as well with words and spelling and so forth. And then finally have everyone sit down and chorus and check the words together as a class. Okay, now onto the next step. And this is where students are going to make uh, a skeleton mobile craft. So we're going to use the same craft sheet as I showed you before. Uh, if you want to save time, you can cut these out. Each student will need one. So you need to cut them out for each student. Probably easier if you give out a sheet to each student and they cut their own out. Okay, and what you'll do is also give each student a straw and then you'll need some string or yarn or wool and some glue or tape. And the students are going to try and make the shape of the skeleton using the string or the wool to stick it all together into the right shape and then hang it on the straw. So it's a really cool skeleton decoration. Okay, so I have students work together on that using the tape. And then the great place if you can is to hang them from the ceiling. So if you can get everyone's hung up on the ceiling, it'll make a really good decoration. Right, now it's the read and write section of the lesson. This is just something we do every week. Uh, where students can build on their reading and writing ability. Uh, on our website, we've got a whole section on this uh, where you can download the materials to do in the class from simple phonics all the way through to sentence structure and reading and writing full stories. Right, back to the Halloween part of the lesson. 
and we've got a really fun Halloween song. And we're going to do an active listening activity with this song. So before we play the song, we'll give out the worksheets, which you can download from our website, and give each of these worksheets to each student. And on the worksheets, we've got the lyrics to the song. Plus, you can see we've got all of the characters we've learned and their associated words, a wizard and monster and so on. And in the song, each of these characters makes an appearance and you need to, the students need to listen to the song and then write down the character in the blank spaces in the order that they appear in the song. So, for example, let me play it for you. on Halloween night. Go outside in the street tonight. Who will we need on Halloween night? Look, there's a ghost. Look, there's a monster. Okay, so you get the idea. So you might have to play it through a couple of times because it runs through a little bit quickly. Um, but as they do, students can listen to the, the song and fill in the worksheet. Then play it one more time and if students want to, they can sing along. They've got the words there, they can sing along with the song. Okay, and next up we've got a classroom reader. So a nice fun story. Again, each of the Halloween characters uh, appear in this. If you've got a projector or a big screen, you can use the, the slideshow here to, to go through the story. If not, uh, you can download the reader from our website, print it off and construct a little book. Okay, so you go through with each student, uh, introduce the characters, have the students describe what's in the picture and read through. And as you can see in every page, one of the characters appears, suddenly a ghost appeared. Uh, and then a monster jumped up and get the students really involved. They can act out the scene. You can have someone being the monster in this one here. You can have someone being the witch and doing cackle cackle and have fun with it. Uh, and as you see through each page, we've got all the different characters. And at the end, we find out they're just kids. Right, so we read through it once and then give out this worksheet to your students. This shows the characters in the story and other characters as well. They need to um, think about, try and remember who is in the story, tick the boxes and write the word next to the character. Then when everyone's finished doing that, you can read through the story one more time and check everyone's answers. Right, so that brings us to the end of the lesson. And if you've got some time left over, we've got some fun, Halloween activities that you can do with your students. Um, maybe you've got some ideas of your own you want to put in here. Uh, we've got a couple for you. There's, um, as you see on the screen, the Melt the Witch game. For this you need, if you've got a chalkboard, um, you can draw a picture of a witch on the board and then students can throw wet sponges and uh, this creates the effect of the witch melting away, which is good fun. Uh, another one, Pass the Vampire Bat. So you'll need straws and vampire bats made out of tissues. And you can make a team game where students have to use a straw to suck and pass the bat to the next student and get the students to pass the bat up and down their line. You have them lined up and the team that finishes first is the winner. And then one more game, uh, I went into a haunted house. So you get students to sit in a circle and student A would say, I went into a haunted house and saw a witch. Then student B would continue, I went into a haunted house and saw a witch. 
and a zombie. And they keep continuing going round and round and round, adding other characters and trying to remember the correct order. And if a student, when they're saying their sentence gets, misses out a character or gets the order wrong, they have to sit out of the round. And you keep going until there's, until the story's finished or until there's only one student left. And that's the end of the main part of the lesson. And all that's left now is to wrap up the lesson. And we'll do that first with giving out homework. Right, we've got two homework sheets available here, which you can download and print off from our website. Um, the first one here is a little bit more difficult than number two. So this goes back to the labeling we did earlier in the lesson of the skeleton. Student need to label this diagram with the different uh, body parts. For example, here would be nose, arm, and so on. If your students, that's a little bit difficult for them, we've got it with the key down here and they can use the copy the words in the spaces. Okay, so give those out to students, hold up the sheet and model what to do first so they have an idea and then tell your students to put their homework away in their bags. And then finally, we'll do a quick check and say goodbye. So have all your students line up at the door and you can stand between the first student and the door and hold up a flashcard, for example, this one here and ask your, your student has to say what it is and you can even get them to do a fun impression or something. If they give you the correct answer, then they can go. Uh, if not, back to the end of the line and then they need to work their way forward and they get another go. And that's the end of the lesson. So I hope that's helpful for you um, for your Halloween class. Um, if you have other students of different ages, then please check in the description below for those uh, Halloween lessons. Uh, please leave any comments or any questions you have and also please like and subscribe. Okay, thank you.